Uh, hey, are you aware that, uh, Satan the Bully's ghost is hanging out in the other room? Yeah, of course he's right in the other room where no one can see him. What do you think, I'm some idiot who forgot to get Paul to read his lines before he went out of town for three weeks? What's that? Oh, he says he has a message from beyond the grave. Oh, what's the message? Review more dingo movies. Why would I review more dingo movies? They're all exactly the same. Everything that's wrong with one of them is wrong with all of them. Uh, second off, everyone talks about dingo movies. They are so played out. What would I even say? Third off, I just really don't want to watch any more dingo movies. Why on earth would I review more dingo movies? Because your last dingo video is your most viewed review? All right, let's do it. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew didn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, Dingo Pictures Volume 2. <sighs> Hello, Disney bootlegs. I am called a cease and desist. And there's no point in beating around the bush. Let's just get into it. I did try to find more information on Dingo, but it seems whoever was behind these films has cut and run a long time ago. Which, given the quality and dubious legal nature of these films, is probably for their benefit, though it'd be nice to have anything to go off of or even a consistent way to watch these films. Most of them are on YouTube because it's not like they're gonna take any legal action, even if they were still around. But there are still some that haven't made it to YouTube, or some that aren't the full movie because that's just how the DVD was released. A lot of information on their website is contradictory as well. They have a website listed for where they got all their voice actors, but it doesn't feature any of the people known to have done voices for them. I think we just have to accept that nothing about Dingo makes any sense. For our first film, we're looking at Atlantis, which, based on my intensive research, is a ripoff of the Disney movie Atlantis. Shocking, I know. It's hard to know when any of these dingo movies came out. The bootleg wiki says this came out in 97, but that's four years before the Disney movie. Maybe Dingo heard Atlantis was in production and rushed this one out, but it's probably just as likely this date is wrong. Of note, while the English version I have is 42 minutes, there's a German version that's an hour long. Whether or not these 20 minutes ever existed in English is hard to say, but like hell I'm gonna put forth the effort to find more footage for a dingo movie. 42 minutes is fine. Atlantis, despite being based on an old myth, is one of the Disney films that had an original story rather than just being based on a storybook, which means Dingo probably had less to go off of, especially if they were making this four years before it came out. Then again, I guess the same could be said for Lion King and Land Before Time. Regardless, it'll be interesting to see what Dingo comes up with for a story. Or more than likely, it won't be. Atlantis was never a Disney movie I found particularly interesting. In fact, I think it was a big step towards Disney's post-Renaissance fall from grace. But its one redeeming factor was the amazing visual detail. Something I trust Dingo will do perfectly. Okay, first off, you started in the middle of a measure, which is not a good way to start things. Shock of shocks, the German version actually starts at the beginning of the song. Follow up, is that Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles? Maybe I'm hearing things, but they sound suspiciously similar to me. And what is this thing? A purple lobster? An iguana? We may never know. <laughs> oh, 
you missed that. You've had much better days, Petros. Missed what? The water? What was he aiming for? No, why should I? I hate cold water. Coward. You threw it in, so it's up to you to get it out again. And I probably don't even have to mention that the lip flaps don't match up. So the main boy, Petros, finds a message in a bottle, but he can't read it because it's in hieroglyphics. Pictures are better anyway. Hey! Hey! Where are you off to? Did... Did she come in early on that line? Oh boy, running animation. Dingo, you can barely animate characters standing still. Petros! Petros! Your mom's calling. Come on now, time to eat! Oh, and apparently everyone's gonna come in early on their lines because second takes are for suckers. Ow, ow. Sounds like Grandpa! Ew. The lobster lizard bites Grandpa, who also seems to not know what it is since he just calls it a beast. Dumb beast, let go! Ow! Jesus, man, that's a deep cut! You're gonna need to stitch that up, don't just laugh at it. Oh, I guess it's fine. Grandpa looks at the note and says he has a book to translate it, which reveals that it has the location of the lost city of Atlantis. Which seems a little overly convenient, but whatever. It's at this point that I'm going to note that Dingo's movie takes place in ancient Greece, which I guess is where the Atlantis myth originated, but that's a ways away from the setting of the Disney movie in 1950s America. What do you want to do in a sunken city? I don't want to go there. Then stay here. The end. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably one of the funniest interactions in any Dingo movie. They just discovered the lost city of Atlantis and the kid's like, Nah, let's stay home. You're not listening. To me properly, let me explain it to you. In more detail. Yeah, I don't think any character is capable of explaining this in plain English. Come on, everybody, let's get back to work. I think Grandpa's going senile. You're one to fucking talk. Couldn't you just show them the book? Make sure you translated everything right? And what about me? You have to decide that for yourself. Now, on the spot? You can take your time, Uzo. We first have to make this boat seaworthy. Well, then there's hope yet. That'll never happen. Guys, when you only have a few people dubbing, you can't have characters do voices or it sounds like a different character. Especially when the mouth moving is not a reliable indicator of them talking. And now Uzo the dog has arm floaties, because those existed in ancient Greece. Look, Grandpa, flying fish! Uh, you and I have very different definitions of flying. Finally, a real journey by the sea! And they were never seen again. Okay, they didn't die yet, but they did sail right into a storm and- oh, oh, it's over. When do we get there? I've had enough, I feel sick, I'm afraid and thirsty, I want something to eat! Everything! Yuck, I want Happy Meal! They find an island from the map and meet a talking seal and a polar bear? I knew global warming was bad, but this is ridiculous! Actually, these characters are left over from Dingo's version of Balto. And I do mean characters and not just character designs, as they mention they're from Alaska and reference some of the things they did in Balto. So this movie set in ancient Greece takes place before an event from 1925. Hold on, 1925... Carry the one... Square root of infinity, times the hypotenuse, yeah that adds up. The seal swims through the water stages of Donkey Kong Country to find out if anyone knows about Atlantis. Have you ever heard of Atlantis? The Disney movie? And you're sure that you can swim in the sea with those things and not sink? That's what I said. Could I try it too? I'm sure you could. May I try it then? If you give them back to me afterwards. I promise. Bet you're jealous of those Germans who got 15 extra minutes of this. And do any of your friends know Atlantis? Mm, 
I'm sorry, but none of them know about a sunken city. But I'm sure that Atlantis must be somewhere near here. Gee, if only you had a map. What are they doing? The pleasure's mine. I'm Petrus. Grandpa says you're the smartest animals in the world. Your grandpa must be pretty smart. You'd be wrong about that. We can't stay underwater that long. Exactly. You know what? Exactly. So because a dolphin is a mammal, he's able to teach Pedro and Grandpa the secret to holding their breath. Um, guys, it's, it's called a blowhole. Humans don't have one. But Grandpa decides he's too old, so Peros goes at it alone. They encounter a fish who says he doesn't know Atlantis. Atlantis? There's no one here by that name. I'm Willie, by the way. And uh, that's Hubert. Ah, Hubert. Truly the most important character in this film. Wait, you're crazy! Don't swim through there! Why not? Yes, it's the entrance to the underworld! The entrance to hell? Yeah, I've been there, done that. We've discovered the entrance! Why, that's wonderful! Damn, I hope that you'd never find the entrance. Uh, did Grandpa and Lil Uzo have the same voice temporarily? Also, I appreciate the potty mouth. And there's a cactus on the beach? You guys ever uh, take geology, or biology, or history, or English? You sure as hell didn't take creative writing. The fish think that is the entrance to the underworld. Yes. And because Grandpa always says there is no hell, it must be the entrance to somewhere else. Or maybe Grandpa's wrong and there is a hell? Oh, who am I kidding? This is a dingo movie. They're already in hell. Yes, yes, that's right. But you're saying, but I have an idea. I hope it's a good idea. Eh, I was kind of hoping it was a bad idea. Well, at this point, I at least expect it to be a bad idea. Actually, his plan is to tie a rope around Petroleum and pull him out if there's something bad, like a strong current. So at least Grandpa's seen Poltergeist. You're the smartest Grandpa in the whole world! I'd disagree with you, but all things considered, he might be the smartest person in that world. Although they put Willy in charge of holding the rope. Because when would a human ever be able to pull a fish on a rope? But surprise, they're in Atlantis. My goodness, this is impossible. You see, it's not impossible. Well, can't argue with that. My favorite part of Atlantis is that they reuse their Rasputin character from their Anastasia ripoff, which makes it seem like the great wizard Rasputin escaped to Atlantis. Or was from Atlantis, depending on when this takes place. We're not here by chance, we found you with this. Ha! But there's nothing to it. Just like there's nothing to you, random princess character we've never seen before. He's a wizard. Took you that long to figure that out? What even brought you to that conclusion? He hasn't done anything yet. It is strictly forbidden to send a message to the surface. Who of you did? Who was it? It must have been someone. No, I think it was no one. Don't want any Earthlings down here. Wait, Earthling? You're on Earth too, jackass. Believe me, Jaina. The people from the Earth are not nice at all. They're always fighting or worse yet at war with one another. Humans are bad because war. What an interesting take that's never been made before. You hear, Yana? He cooks himself. But you think I have to do everything for you. Ma Fuck off, robot. Or 
at least. I've no idea what you're talking about. My thoughts exactly. That Pedro should never have found us. We're in for some problems now. Tensions really starting to build. Good thing there's only ten minutes left. You guys think this film is poorly structured? I, I don't know, I just kind of get the sense that this is poorly structured. And they're so advanced, they drive bumper cars. Peak vehicular technology? Yeah, it's great. I believe you. I'm sure everything is very exciting, but I'm bored. Fuck off, dolphin. Me too. So cut it short. We want to get out of here. And answer as soon as possible. And as quickly, as, quickly as, possible. as possible. I'd also like to go back to my grandpa. Not today, but maybe tomorrow. But, but that's not possible. Why not? It's forbidden. Well, that's the best that scene could ever look. No reason to change it at all. Honestly, these dubs seem like they were written by someone who didn't understand German, so they just wrote down lines to match up with the mouths every time they move. Well, not even every time they move. It's absolutely impossible. We cannot allow Petros to return to Earth. Nah, I'm just gonna leave. Try and stop me, dipshits. He promises not to tell anyone, but they're skeptical. I hope it's clear to you, Petros, that you'll bring us all, including Jaina, into the greatest danger if you break your word. I would never do anything to harm Jaina. You should know that. Yeah, why would he hurt the girl he met like two minutes ago? He must really like her. So they decided to let him leave. That sure was a non-issue. It does should mean danger for me too, but that doesn't interest you at all. I am worth nothing. All I am to you is a lump of tin. Rubbish, Robbie. Pedros wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Of course not, Robbie. You're my friend. Guys, you can't just have characters act like they've had this big character arc without showing us that character arc. If I had to guess, the missing 20 minutes or so happens here, and it has these characters getting to know each other, but still, that's barely any time to get to know each other. They board a UFO, which takes them to the surface, meaning only 9 minutes of this 50-minute movie is actually set in Atlantis. There's no point in waiting. We have to return to Greece. What do we tell Pedro's mom? I don't know yet. Guys, it's only been a few hours, maybe even less. You can't just give up that quickly. What happened? Are you okay? Did you find Atlantis? Atlantis? No, I'm afraid there is no Atlantis. And that's that. Patrick never tells anyone Atlantis, no one learned anything, and nothing of any consequence happens. As it should be. Next movie. Next up, we've got the Toys Room, also known as Land of Toys, or even just Toys. This is an odd movie, as it's Dingo's only film based on a CG movie, and seems to have mostly original characters that haven't been seen in any other Dingo films. There's some animals that have been reused, but the toys and such haven't ever come back. It came out circa 1995, early into Dingo's lifespan, so it's possible they somehow lost the character sheets? Maybe they just couldn't find a way to weasel them in anywhere, or they realized these things were horrifying, but those don't seem like things that would bother Dingo. And there's another thing of note. Only two more hours, moaned Pino the Ragdoll. Oh no, sighed the other toys. Only two more hours. What did he say? Asked Pronto the telephone. It's all dubbed by one person. See, in their early days, Dingo made video storybooks that would all be narrated by one guy. So I have to think this was one of the first films they made, or at least one of the first ones they translated, because this is the only animated movie like this. He was a little deaf, and one always had to tell him things twice. Great, not like Dingo characters don't already repeat fucking everything. Much like Toy Story, the toys are worried because it's their owner's birthday. You're all acting as if it was the end of the world. It's only the little boy's birthday, said Jumping Jack. Wait, did they confuse a Jack in the Box with Jumping Jacks? 
Jumping Jacks aren't even a toy. Anyway, Jumping Jack is laughing at them because they're all old and soon none of them will be the favorite toy. Including him. Yeah, birthday toys always immediately became my favorite and I definitely didn't forget about them two weeks after I got them. Game over! Peep Charlie the Chip. Uh, I think we need to talk about Charlie the Chip's joystick. Because handheld devices always had aero pads. That's the only problem I see here. Game over means you finished the game. Thank you, I didn't get it. That big package over there, the one with the bow, looks very much like a toy. And truly, as the little boy opened the package, he pulled out a brand new baby doll. Thanks, Mom. My new favorite. That thing looks as if it's really going to get on our nerves, added Cuddly the Cushion. Cuddly the Cushion? Is this a toy? Also, can't the child, which they've avoided showing, see the toys roaming around the room? The baby shows up in the toys room and starts acting like a huge dick. So, kinda like a real kid. The toys all plot to kill the doll. We'll throw ourselves at its head, all of us at once. And if that doesn't work, I'll ride over it, added Skateboard. I could cut it open with my jumping spring, grin jumping jack happily. <laughs> or I'll throttle it with my telephone cord. But the cushion decides, nah, that's a bad idea. Fuck the cushion, kill the baby! Pino, the grotesque sock thing who was the boy's favorite, runs away thinking he'll be unloved. He walks into town and... <laughs> the police chase him. Or the polizai, as it were. He's just a toy. He hasn't done anything illegal. Why is he running? Hey, look, Mumf. Giggled Mumf. I think he's just right for us. What in the ever-loving fuck? Talking garbage. I mean, they'll fit right in with all of the other dingo characters, because they're all talking garbage. <laughs> the streetlight leaned forward curiously to see what was happening. What the fuck, is everything alive? And now, the rats were also coming closer. Coming closer. Seen here. The garbage cans were trying to send him to the dump, but he runs away. To the dump. Because he'd left his bundle behind, he had nothing to eat or drink, and his stomach was growling got louder and louder, which made things even worse. D do toys eat? The next morning, the baby's being a huge fucking dick again. You still haven't caught on. Babies are allowed to cry whenever they want to. You're sure you don't want to kill him? I don't have to be considerate to anyone. If I complain about you, the little boy, he'll throw you all out. Uh, so toys talk to their owners in this universe? He's only thinly dressed. He'll catch cold. And catch colds? Uh... Are toys just, like, pets? Or, or worse, slaves? You know these are conscious beings. Let them free. So Charlie, Jack, Roller, and the phone all set out to find Pino. So they kind of beat Toy Story 2 to the punch with that one. Pino starts making friends in the junkyard, blah, 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 blah. The toys can't find him and decide to call home on the toy phone? They didn't find him. Kind of forgot you were doing a voice on that one, eh? Luckily, a rat tells them where Penis is, and he goes home with them. Forever and ever and ever. Ah, oh, finally. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this pose? I guess that's why they call him Pino. <laughs> but seriously, why do they call him that? All of the other characters' names make sense. Then the baby comes out and they fucking shoot him. The end. And that was Dingo Pictures Volume 2. Don't ask me for anything ever again. God, both of these are so much worse than last time. I could laugh at those, and while I did get a bit of laughs out of Atlanta's Toys Room is just atrocious. 
no, I wouldn't recommend these films. Some other dingo movies, maybe, but fuck Toys Room and eh, to Atlantis. Until next time, I'm Matt, and if you're only here for dingo reviews, please unsubscribe. the message, but it's just the way to a sunken city. A sunken city? Unfortunately, I'd have preferred a real treasure. Man, Dingo's such a stupid company. They'd probably fire one of their best directors over a bunch of tweets they already knew he made. <laughs>